really excited to do this. Um, I want you all to know that I'm actually in the process of live streaming right now on my Facebook. That's what this lovely stick here is. So I'm going to be rotating around so that you all can see me and I'm not blocked by this thing. But hi to everybody on Facebook, live streaming here from the San Diego Writers and Editors Guild. I'm going to give a little presentation on live streaming and social media and just how easy it is. Honestly, I was really, really nervous the first time I did it. I was like, I don't know what I'm doing. I had my friend and my partner show me what I was doing. But I realized at the, um, the big writers festival by the Union Tribune, holy cow, I don't know how my people are gonna find me. I can barely find myself in this. So what am I gonna do? And I figured out I can live stream. And what I'll do is I'll make a little path and a little trail, show people where I am, what's nearby. And lo and behold, that's how my people were able to find me. So that was absolutely a wonderful testament for me right off the bat of how efficient and effective live streaming is. So I'm gonna give a little presentation here about social media and live streaming and the process of it to help make it as easy as possible. We're having a little bit of technical difficulties. I'm not sure exactly how the slides are gonna come out. So please excuse me for that. But all right, so here we go. So the first thing first is figuring out who are you? I know that's a deep <clears throat> philosophical question that we sometimes ask ourselves, who am I? But it's not that hard to really figure it out. What you wanna do is figure out your author persona. Who are you trying to portray to your readers? Are you a fantasy genre? How fantasy do you wanna go? Are you a romance writer? How far into that world do you wanna go? Figure out the persona you want people to see and to understand on the social media side of things, on your media side of things. Who you are when you appear in front of a camera, in front of your phone or what have you, is gonna be different than who you are on your couch in your living room. I just went to the um, uh, La Jolla Writers Conference this weekend, or La Jolla Editors um, Authors Conference. It's phenomenal. If you haven't been, I highly, highly recommend it. One of the presenters said exactly that. You know, at home she is in her sweatpants, she's got her shoes off, she's a mess and all that, because that's her <laughs> home persona. That's who she is. But when she's up in front of a conference, she's somebody else. When she's at her day job, she's somebody else. So that's a part of figuring out who you are and who you want to present. <clears throat> so in figuring out who you are, you can figure out your audience, the people who want to read your books or your works. Are you going for 19 to 26 year olds? Are you going to be appealing to a certain age group? Figuring out age groups are a really good place to start. Who am I writing to? Who do I think will be interested in the works that I'm producing? So that's a really good place to sort of start to figure out your group. Are they the nerds like me? Who do you want to see? What kind of people are you after? So once you figure that out, then you can start to look towards the social media sides of things. And we'll, we'll get to how you can narrow down when your audience is online and how to get them online when you're streaming. So social media, the big scary bear <coughs> social media. There's a bajillion <coughs> platforms and we'll talk about that too. But one of the big things that I've learned so far and that was reiterated at the conference this weekend is that it should really only take you about 20 minutes a day to do your social media things. I know I have lost several hours of my life to sloth videos and llama videos and know how easy it is to get sucked into that world. So trying to figure out how to target what you see on your social media so you don't get distracted by the amazing world of the internet. So then we're gonna talk about live streaming, of course, which is why we're here, and how to make yourself an internet celebrity. It's really not that hard. It's kind of funny in the beginning, but then once you get used to it, you start to feel like, oh, this is, this is quite easy. I mean, I've already been live streaming for several minutes and there's people watching right now, which is kind of cool. You get little notifications on your streaming device that says, hey, this person is watching you and I'm gonna say hi there. And you can actually just click on your screen and wave to them to acknowledge that you're there and that you see them watching. Super easy, but it's just a matter of getting comfortable in front of it. <clears throat> okay, <clears throat> we already talked a little bit about um, Establishing your author persona. Who are you? Are you going to follow your uh, gnome de plume or what? And you'll be able to figure that out by defining your writing. What kind of writer are you? Are you fiction? Are you nonfiction? Start with the big categories and then narrow it down from there until you can get as specific as possible to find your niche of people. 
because those are gonna be your first group of supporters who don't immediately know you. I mean, we all have friends and family members, I've got a bunch watching right now, who are, of course, gonna tune in to anything that I do because they're awesome and they're in my immediate circle. But you wanna find the next circle out from there, and we'll talk about circles of reaching out in your platform here in a minute. So once you've defined who you are and defined your writing, the next thing is branding. <coughs> Putting your image out there to the point where people can see it at a glance and be like, that's as facts and stuff right there. Think about how recognizable Coca-Cola is, Pepsi, McDonald's. They use the same colors, they use the same fonts over and over again. I always use Playfair fonts, I always use a very specific number of pink to represent myself. Was gonna show up in this, but that's okay. It's one of those things that if you do the repetition, 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 people will recognize, hey, that's you, that's my author, I wanna follow them, I recognize that. So for me, everything from my business cards to the invitations that I developed for the animal, um, for foreign and domestics book launch, my colors are there, my fonts are there. Even though the book cover itself is a little different, I figured out how to incorporate my branding into that. So that's important too. And your branding needs to follow you onto your website as well. Try to make sure your website is your name, just something simple so you can repeat it at people quickly and so that they can remember it easily. All right, so once you've done that, you wanna make sure your branding also follows you onto your social media as best you can. We're a little restricted by our social medias in terms of what we can put out there on the main pages sometimes. So Instagram doesn't have a big header uh, image like Facebook does. Facebook's fantastic for setting up an author profile because you can get your book on there, you can have your branding nice and big, whereas Instagram's usually just your face and then your posts after that. You can save things to the headline, but those rotate out. So that's something to kind of think about as you're setting up which social medias are good for you. And that's the thing. There's 10 billion social media platforms out there. Find the ones that you're comfortable with. Find the ones that your people are on in that order. Don't drive yourself nuts trying to learn something you, you don't understand. That's fine. There's a billion ones out there that I don't understand. So I've limited myself to Goodreads, which is my outer circle, Instagram, which is my closer circle, Facebook, which is closer still, and my newsletter. Now I have them like that because on Goodreads, I will publish on there once or twice a month about what I'm reading. So I'll say, oh, this is the book I've got open right now, and once I'm done, I'll post a blog about how I felt about it, my review of it. So those are my Goodreads people. They're my extreme outer circle. They see that I exist, they know that I've done some stuff, but they're out here. But I still con connect with them in that way. Then we come in a little closer to my Instagram people. I post three, four times a week on Instagram, um, sometimes a little more, sometimes a little less. Bare minimum for myself is three times a week, and we'll get into scheduling on that here in a bit. These people I talk to frequently. Even if I'm not posting, I'll reach out to different authors, different book clubs, different libraries, just be like, hey, that's a cool event, wish I could be there. Just little things like that, just any kind of touch you can have throughout the social media platforms brings attention back to yourself. Then we have my Facebook people, hello out there on Facebook, <laughs> who know me pretty well. Now those are the people who I've gone to high school with, my family members, college friends, those are the people I have in my Facebook group. They've seen pictures of me from my prom. They've seen a billion pictures of my cats. They're probably getting sick of that. But that's my Facebook circle, and they're the ones that I'm gonna start live streaming to more frequently because they are in that closer circle of people. And then finally, there's my newsletter, which I reach out to every week, Monday night, hell or high water, I'm writing that newsletter. <laughs> and they are the people who get all the intimate goody stuff. When's the next book coming out? What day is it? They got that information first. What are you up to? Where are you gonna be? That's my most intimate circle of followers, minus my boyfriend kind of thing. That is the closest group of social media outreach that I do. So getting back to your people, how do you find them? The world of hashtags is a giant and scary place and it's as broad and as wide as the imagination can take you. And what's great about hashtags is that that is whatever you want it to be. So we'll get to hashtags in a minute and how they are your friends, but hashtags are how you're gonna find people. That's how you're gonna narrow the search 
to get people who are also looking up the same things to find you. Because that's what you want. You don't want to go out and find every single person and follow them forever because you'll, you'll spend way more than 20 minutes doing that. You want to just send a post with the hashtag in it, and we will get to what that means, to get people to find you. Big part of uh, social media and author platforms is quality, not quantity. So you could have 10 billion Facebook followers, you can have 100,000 Instagram followers, but how many of them actually showed up to your book fair? How many of them actually show up to your book signing? That's where you get to your quality followers. That's your quality platform. Now, has anybody heard that phrase, author platform, before? Mm -hmm. So this whole social media bit is about your author platform. And there is some debate as to how big your platform has to be. I don't think we can exactly quantify it. But the most important part is having that core group of people who will follow you, who will find you at your event, no matter how big or small, or who will at least be sending you the message, hey, I'm there with you in spirit. Because that's your quality platform. And those are the things that agents and publishers look for when they're doing um, or reviewing you for publication, is how big is your platform. That didn't used to be the case 20 years ago because we didn't have social media. you know. So today, it's becoming a world where instead of you being the best author ever, it's are you a great author slash do you have an author platform? So publishers are looking for people who that they know that they can invest in when their investment will be returned. And this is how they determine that is with your followers. But again, you're looking for quality followers. That's a big thing to kind of keep in mind as you're going. So once you do this, a good thing to figure out is what time they're active. These people that you have now hunted for and cultivated, when are they online? When are they gonna be tuning in to watch you on Facebook to, <laughs> to make sure that you're there and they're there at the same time? So I did a bunch of research on this and saw that Tuesday through Thursday between 1 p.m. and 4 p.m. are the best times to post. Hmm. <laughs> so that's one of those things that's really sort of difficult to figure out. And I started looking and started recording, when are my people actually online? Yeah, this is a huge, we'll get to you in just a bit. This is a huge We're national survey that was yeah. done. So we wanted to, I wanted to see my people, when are my people online? So I did a bunch of tests to post throughout the day, to live stream throughout the day to see what works. And right now I've got quite a good number of people going on because I know that my Facebook people typically are on from 4 to 8 p.m. So that's something that I have figured out, whereas with my Instagram folks, they're more 1 p.m. to 5.30. But that's something you have to figure out on your own. So a big part of that is, are they East Coast people? Are they Midwest people? Are, where in the world are they? That'll kind of help you to determine what time to post. And that's, that's really important, because you want them to see that. Otherwise, your posts will get lost in the myriad of other posts. No, this is my marketing schedule, but it's not coming up very well. But so another thing, guys, I'll send my, um, I'll post my uh, presentations that you can look back to this for notes and stuff if you'd like. So I have my day broken up. My nine to five, I go do that in the morning. First thing I do when I get home is post to my social media, so I don't have to think about it. Then I get back into my writing or do that in the evening time. But what I was trying to demonstrate with this is that I have a set schedule that I try to follow every day. The only day that I really kind of take off is Friday, because goodness gracious, I have a full-time job and I'm trying to establish this as my next career. So, you know, it's one of those things where you have to, have to, have to have a schedule and stick to it to the best of your ability. Otherwise, it's really easy to fall off the track. And when you're doing live stream especially, some of the most successful live streamers always post at 7 p.m. on a Thursday night or what have you. They set a regular schedule like a TV program so that their followers know, hey, I know S. Faxon's gonna be on in five minutes. I wanna see what's going on. Let me go sit down and do that. So that's what you wanna establish with live streaming. It's sort of a set time to be doing it because then people know I have to be in front of my computer or in front of my phone at that time so I can ask this person that question or see what's going on. Um, when you have those spontaneous events, that's fine too. About two hours before you're gonna post or think you might be posting a live stream, you wanna start telling your people, hey, I'm gonna be online live at this time, hope to see you there. That way they know to tune in as well. 
no matter what, you want to post two hours at least before you're live streaming. Kind of do a countdown. About an hour and a half ago, I would sent out a countdown post. 55 minutes or so until the post, whatever it was. I can't math right now. So, <laughs> so you know, just give them the heads up that you're going to be online. And it seems to be quite effective. Hey, Victoria, my best friend. So, on from that, we're going to talk a little bit about hashtags, the whole wide world of hashtags. Now, hashtags is our pound sign, our little number sign. And what it is, is it's a tool for sorting. It's a tool for selecting topics of interest. Now, I just made a huge example of topics or of hashtag potentials, but honest to goodness, any phrase you say could be a hashtag. It could be a hashtag. It doesn't matter what the hashtag is if multiple people are looking it up. So I started with some of the bigger hashtags that I use and then melted on down into some of the smaller ones that I've been using lately. So we've got everything from book club, hashtag reader, writer, author life, writer life, San Diego Reads, 2019 Reads, October Reads, Instabooks, and then I kind of went into sports, <laughs> reader life, book reviews, sailing, fiction, fantasy, cat love, cat life, author life. These are some of the things that I do just to get more attention towards my posts. If you start to use the same hashtags over and over and over again, Instagram and Facebook start to think, oh, this might be a computer generating this. So you want to switch it up pretty regularly just so that people are drawn to you and that the automatic filters online don't sort you out and start to tag you as junk or as spam. So one of the things I also did here was The Animal Court, which is my book, and Foreign and Domestic Affairs, which is the sequel coming out, because you can hashtag your own books. You can hashtag your name, you can hashtag your website. Those are all just different ways to get people to see you and to encourage people to use a hashtag. So when your friend Sam is on the beach in Newport reading your book, he's going to put hashtag porn and domestic affairs so that other people see that he's reading that book at that time on that beach. And that's free marketing, which is really cool. Social media is free marketing. So, you know, this is one of those things. Definitely take advantage of it because it's such a good tool. It is kind of intimidating at first. I, I was not on Instagram at all prior to trying to get my books out there. Um, I kind of used Facebook prior to this, um, but these books have really spurred me to get into it and understand it a bit more, which has been pretty pretty successful so far. What about Twitter? I don't. I personally don't do Twitter. So um, while I have one, I don't really use it. But that goes back into find what works for you, because it, it's not my thing. Um, I don't have time to sit there and read 120 characters, um, but. For some people, it's a phenomenal tool. And I mean, it started a revolution. It's a phenomenal, phenomenal tool. And so this kind of leads into this slide here where we've got, um, it's just a second, yeah. um, we've got the whole wide world of um, social media platforms that you can live stream on. So from YouTube to Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, Blogger, LinkedIn, um, I don't remember what this one is, um, Twitch, there's so many things that you can live stream on it's really nice because, yeah, it seems overwhelming that there's so many of them, but that gives you options. You know, find one that's the easiest for you, that has the best compatibility for the time that you have to dedicate towards it, those 20 minutes a day, and something that you're able to figure out. Because like I said, I, I don't understand Twitter, and I also really don't understand uh, Tumblr. I don't know what that is. So, you know, find what works best for you. I'm just gonna interrupt for a second. Yeah. I saw a couple hands in the back, but we did decide early on to hold questions till the end, please. Thank you. Go ahead. Thanks, Sarah. Yeah, of course. All right, guys. So here's a little bit more about my setup for live streaming. We can see here my giant selfie stick, also known as my tripod, that we are live streaming from right now. Again, hello, Facebook people. Um, here is my micro office at home. I took over a closet and made it my little corner of the world. It's my sensory deprivation closet. So in here, I've got my setup for when I do the live streaming. I have my tripod here, me hamming it up while taking this photo. Behind that is the light, because you want the light to be towards your face, not behind you, so it doesn't interrupt your feed, just like doing a home video sort of thing. I also have here this big whiteboard where I had sort of scripted out what I was going to say, just put some pointers nice and big so I could actually read it, and I had that right next to, right below my camera here. 
And then I also had the props, the things that I was going to mention during the live stream, right there, ready to go, ready to reach. So I was like, blah, 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 blah. And then, ha, ha. You know, it was just right there, right in reach of me. So I didn't have to fuddle around or do anything. So you look more professional while you're presenting. You want to make yourself, I mean, again, it goes back to your author platform, but you kind of want to appear as professional as possible as you're giving your presentations because you want people to tune back in. If you're doing a comedy thing, go for it. But hmm. that goes into just figuring out your author persona. So that was all the um, planning ahead aspects. I had my script. I knew what sort of time I was going to take. I wanted to do my last post in about two, three minutes just to give people a little touch or a little flair of it. Then I also had my props here ready. And most importantly, breathe. That's the biggest thing. You know, don't start rushing. Don't start panicking. You don't see the people behind it. It's just you and your phone, which is really nice. Yeah, you'll see their little hi as they pop up, but it's fine. It's just you and your people out there. So just take a deep breath before you start and before you push the let's go live. What's really nice about the, um, so uh, I can only speak to Facebook and Instagram, is that they'll give you an idea of what it's going to look like. You can put up different filters. You can put up a little um, caption. Hey, I'm here at wherever. Come and join me. Just so that you can get an idea of what it's going to look like before you actually push live. So before you start doing it, one of the things I highly, highly, highly recommend is find your heroes online or the celebrities or the people or the authors that you really appreciate who are also live streaming. My biggest inspiration for live streaming was Dwayne The Rock Johnson, of all people. I absolutely love following him on Instagram. And one of my favorite things that he does do is he live streams, and he's just so calm and so cool on camera. Of course, he's a major celebrity, so he's got a little bit more gravitas behind him. But it was just so appealing to me, the way that he would just whip out the camera and be like, I'm in Maui, this is my life. And that really inspired me to start doing this more regularly. So try to find people that you respect and admire out there that you want to sort of glean from or take a little bit from. <clears throat> so live streaming on Instagram. This is sort of a flash of what it looks like. So when you first open up Instagram on your phone, it looks like this. You've got your story, your friend's most recent stories, and then the feed down here. To start the live stream, you would take your finger on the screen and just swipe it to the right, and then you'll have this screen over here pop up. And this says live on Instagram. And they'll start to let people know like a second before you post, hey, Sarah's about to start live stream on Instagram. Come check it out. And in order to do it, you just push whoop, that little button there, and there you are. It's that <coughs> simple. And to end it, you say signing out, cheers, or what have you, and just boop again. And that's it. It's that simple. And for Facebook, it's a similar thing as well, but you don't have to swipe. So on Facebook, you've got your main screen on your phone, right above your face or your profile picture. There's a button here that says live. So you just tap that. It'll come up like this. I didn't have an example of myself, so I used the rock. So <laughs> you'll have a nice screen here where you can put, like I said, a caption. Facebook and Instagram are owned by the same people, so it's a very similar format. So you can put, like The Rock did here, broadcasting from wherever, and your people will see that. And you push that button right there that says go live. And then you can sit there and talk to your people, and then their comments and their little thumbs up will start to appear right here, as mine is right now. And once you're done there, you can either switch it around to see the people around you, switch perspective back to yourself so you can see your lovely face, and then once you're done, just push that button again. And that's it. That's the ease of live streaming and the actual functionality behind it. And the most important thing about it is just have fun. It's kind of a cool thing to be doing to see yourself on the screen. You know, we've all watched our favorite celebrities for years or all of those people online or on television and now on our phones or in our pockets on our watches. And now this gives us the opportunity to make ourselves celebrities which is something that really hasn't been available to authors before. So this is a phenomenal, phenomenal tool to make yourself available. If you can't go to a bookstore, if you're having trouble finding places where you can appear live, here you go. This is the best way to do it. It is free, as I mentioned. 
And it, there is a process of understanding it and figuring it out, but absolutely, absolutely worth it in the end. And uh, yeah, that's it, folks. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. What's the name of your book again? My books are... How about if we pass it around if absolutely. you don't Absolutely. We'll just pass both of them around. And if we're possible, I'd also like to sign our, um, pass around a um, newsletter sign-up sheet if you'd like to see more of my happenings. I'd be happy to take your emails down. That's totally optional, of course. Yeah. So can that be recorded? Yes. Yeah, so what I'm going to do after this is I'm going to say save to my story, and that's going to appear right here for, I think, 24 hours. And then you can also save it directly to your page as well on Facebook. Now, if you're streaming to YouTube, that's saved. If you're streaming on Instagram, I believe it's saved in a similar format here where you just push add to my story and it'll appear there as well. And you can save it onto your phone directly too to save on bigger flat platforms later. Yes? You talked about hashtags and how you can make up a hash hashtag for anything. Mm -hmm. So you have a hashtag for your hashtag in the name of your book. I don't remember what it was, animal something. Animal court. Animal court, okay. So you, do, you make a hashtag for animal court. How does anybody in the world know that that hashtag is out there and how do they find it? It's a great question. So I've used it over and over and over again and when I post in my newsletter or when I do a live stream or those sort of things, I'll say, hey guys, if you're watching right now, be sure to post hashtag animal court, hashtag S Faxon. When you're reading this book, let's see how you're doing it. Let's see your photo posted and in the captions put hashtag the animal court. And that's a good way to get people to start adding those things to it. Just bombard people with your hashtags. I put my hashtag as fact, or excuse me, animal court and now foreign and domestic affairs in almost every post that I do. And I've actually started to notice that more and more people are starting to do that as well. One of the things that's really nice about Instagram is it'll tell you how many times that hashtag has been used. So that's something that really is a good indicator for marking who else is using that hashtag. You may not know exactly who it is at first unless you click on the hashtag because it's now a link. So when you're in your social media platform, you can click on the hashtag and it'll take you there. And all the posts that have been done in that hashtag will show up. So that's kind of another way to track it. Yes. Is it, is that, I, I've only really written previously in nonfiction and science and uh, academic type thing. Is it like using keyword? Is that how it's, is that yes. kind of thing? Because I yeah. just like, where he says, just do hashtag. It's like, well, where, where do you, where do you put this? Where is it going? Where is it, you know? Where, what is this? Yeah, yeah. Where, where is it, you know? Yeah. Good question. That's yeah. a great question. Yeah, it's a keyword. That's exactly keyword. it. It's okay. a keyword. It's just another way to sort and to see what you have out there. And, um, oh, I forgot where I was going with that. But yes, it is a keyword. Yeah. And um, it works just as well in the, um, non-fiction world as it does in the fiction world, as it does in the real world or what have you. I mean, like I said, Twitter was able to start a revolution because they were using hashtags all over the place yeah. to get people to pay attention to their cause. Yeah. Uh, yes? Um, if, if I can add a couple of comments and then follow up with a question. Yeah. So a keyword is a word that SEO organically is going to find. A hashtag is a platform <coughs> going, if you put this hashtag in front of this word, we're going to identify this as something for people to pay attention to. So liken it to a flare that only certain people see. Okay. Right? Okay. And there are tools, I, I don't know them, um, but you can look up and see what's trending mm -hmm. on, say, Instagram. So you yeah. can both add your hashtags, as she's beautifully suggesting, but you can also see what's related to okay. me that other people are using. Right? Yeah, that's a great point, yeah. Um, and then I just wanted to mention, um, this isn't about professionalism. <laughs> this is about embracing the intimacy of amateur. <laughs> what this is selling is authenticity and transparency. You don't have to be perfect. And don't try to script it. Figure out your talking points, right? Mm -hmm. And then trust that the words are gonna come. Just, I know my talking points, so I kind of stay on topic. The question was, can you talk about leveraging additional Facebook pages, kind of like you do a business page yeah. and Facebook groups? Yes. So I have a Facebook page for my book or for my creative works. It's called The Reading Escape. I haven't had too much success with it so far, to be honest. Um, 
I've tried to put it out there, try to promote it. It's not really catching people yet, but also I honestly haven't put enough time into it. So that's something that I think I need to continue to work on is the Facebook page itself. And what it is is a profile for your works. So you have your personal page where you post your cat posts and your I have a great cup of coffee at this place post. And then your page is separate from that. So it's like your business aspect, your business side of things or whatever, or what have you, excuse me. So that's what your pages are about, is to create sort of a, a separate category of what you want people to see on your professional side of things. So that's something I know I need to continue to develop and to work on. Now groups are categories of like book clubs, of real estate clubs, of the OB rentals, you know, what, whatever it is, that's what groups are. And you could start a group. We could start, there might even be an SD SDWeg group right now on Facebook. I'm not sure if there is, that'd be really cool if there is. <laughs> we can link all of ourselves together. So you have like-minded people or like interested people together in one group of categories. One of the groups I belong to, I think, is the um, National Women's Readers Association. I think it's something like that. So that's constantly posting um, different books that they're reading, books, topics that they're interested in, book discussions. Hey, what should I read next? And we all contribute toward that. You don't have to contribute to that. You will see their um, posts in your feed as you go through. But that's not something that you necessarily have to click into or be involved in. But there are all sorts of different groups out there, and I do encourage you to look for those because there, if you have an extremely specific book out there with a very specific group of people you want to target, they're probably online, and the best way to find them is probably on Facebook for that sort of thing. Yes. If you hashtag your website, is it live? How do you do that? Do you do the exact website? Hashtagging the website's a little more difficult. Um, for Instagram and Facebook, which are the ones I'll be talking to on this, you can't really hashtag your website. So on Facebook, I can just put in the comments www.sfaxon.com, and it's a live link, so people can click on it and it'll take them there. In Instagram, you can't put your website in your comments. So one of the things that's really popular to do is to say, see link in my bio. And so people will click on your name, and that'll take them to your profile page, which looks like this. And then in here, you can put whatever link you want. I change it up pretty frequently. Usually I do have my sfaxon.com. Right now I have the link to the Eventbrite page where um, my RSVP for my book launch is going on, because that's where I want to target people right now. And that's one of the things that's pretty nice about Instagram is that it's super easy to update. I was able to do it on my tiny little bless you, on my tiny little iPhone this morning in the bathroom kind of thing. Like wherever you can find your space and time for Instagram, it lets you do it because it's really user friendly, which is pretty nice. So yeah, that's something you would just put right there, edit profile, upload your link, copy and paste it right in. You don't even have to memorize it. Just copy it from whatever browser you're using and paste it right in. Boom, save, there you go. And so that's, that's how you get people to your website using Instagram. Facebook, I think as I mentioned, you just put it right there in your um, comment that you're putting in. Yeah, they don't know. Oh, okay. Sir, can you, oh, I'm sorry, were you finished? <laughs> no. Uh, yeah, okay. If I start uh, hashtagging my books, what happens the first time I use it? When somebody clicks, there's nothing they are going to. You just have to keep doing it. That's Until the thing. Get, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so just keep, keep posting, keep using that hashtag for your book. Um, just get it out there as much as possible. Share it with your friends. So you can tag your friends within this. That's something that's quite easy to do. There's usually a little, um, little box right next to it that says tag your friends. Or you can do their username, which is at, the little at symbol. And then whatever their username is within your comments. And say, hey, use this hashtag and get them starting to use it then more and more of those posts will start to show up. So that's another way to get people to discover your hashtag mm -hmm. is to get your circle. Think about your circles. Who's your, your immediate circles of followers, of um, supporters, who can help you get that word out? What does that mean, tag your friends? Tagging your friends is a way to link your post to them. So if my boyfriend were to post something at me that said, at so lovely day in the park, I'm gonna tag Sarah Faxon in it, I would see that he posted immediately about this lovely day in the park. And my followers, I think, would also see it as well. And anything that's commented or um, liked or what have you on that post, 
I will also see. I believe that's how that works. Yeah, so just to build on that, it, it's, it's within the ecosphere of these systems. So when she's talking about tagging somebody, when you see the at sign in front of a name in social media, that's tagging that person. And what that does is, like she's saying, that alerts them that they've been included in this conversation. So just as you get used to this, there's certain symbols, hashtags, at signs that perform a function. Mm -hmm. And then you'll get used to what those are. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I would suggest that you be disciplined about hashtagging your friends. If you, po if you post a video or post and you hashtag all f uh, 30 or 40 of your friends, <laughs> you're hijacking your post onto their timeline and they might get annoyed by that. Yeah, that's excellent advice. That's actually really good advice. So another part of that too is don't overdo hashtags either. So you can hashtag from here to Timbuktu sort of thing, but that gets kind of crazy and that can also sort of tag you as somebody who's sort of abusing social media. So there's targets for everything and an appropriate use of everything, and I, I highly respect and agree with that. If it involves a friend, if it involves common subject matter, yes. Mm -hmm. But if you're just trying to sell your cosmetics and yeah. you want, yeah. <coughs> yeah. Don't put all your friends' hashtags on there. Yeah, exactly. And uh, Sarah, can you uh, live stream on both Instagram and Facebook at the same time? So what I was gonna try to do double phone it. I was going to try to have, because I keep my phones, um, I was going to try to use Facebook on my iPhone because I know I have really good service on it, and then the Instagram off this at the same time. Oh. So something that I'd recommend doing is if you have a tablet, an iPad, or any of those, you know, have that open for your Instagram people or whatever, and the other one for whatever media of choice, so you can do two at the same time. I think that's sort of cheating, but we'll go with it. Uh, yes. I just can you, uh, which would be more easy to share? So let's say I was had to choose live stream one, I'm going to save it, and now let me push that save file over. Yeah. Is it easier to go from Instagram to Facebook or from Facebook to Instagram? I have found so far from Facebook to Instagram. Um, I think it's a little easier to save using Facebook because I can download quite easily from my phone. Facebook to my phone and then upload to Instagram that way. So even though it's not live in that moment to Instagram, it's hot off the presses sort of thing. So it still has that live-esque feel. Um, so that's actually a really good question too and something I've been trying to figure out as well so I don't have to double phone it because <laughs> it kind of feels vain. But <laughs> um, yeah, that is that is a really good question and I need to figure that out too. Another thing you can do is if you have a nice professional camera, a lot of those now are equipped with Wi-Fi. So you can stream from your cameras now. I think I've got a Canon DS that I think does it. I haven't figured it out yet, but I think it does it too where I can go directly to social media. I have to figure that one out. Uh, what, there was another question in the back real quick? And then we'll come back to you. Yeah, you were talking about um, the different uh, social media outlets mm -hmm. and you mentioned that you use Facebook and use Instagram. Do you pay any attention to the demographics of those or do you just use them because they're handy? I do pay attention to the demographics. So, so that's another really good question which goes back to figuring out our audience. Who's on what platform? I know that mm -hmm. my books are currently, well, are more appealing to readers who are above 25. I know that right off the bat that that story is 25 and up. And for the most part, don't be offended by this Facebook, that demographic is on Facebook. That is where I know that that demographic of my, my people, my supporters are. For Instagram, that tends to be the 18 to 35 year olds. And that's the group I'm trying to get to subscribe to my newsletter. My Facebook people, they're all said and done there. They're all pretty much already set to go with me on that side of things. So it really depends on what you're trying to do. If you're trying to cultivate followers, try to figure out what demographic you're appealing to and figure out where they are. You can do online research for that. Everything's Googleable, if you will. But you, if you really want to look into it and get a really good in-depth feel for it, figure out your people 
yourself. I know that sounds kind of strange, but that's what I've been doing over the last several months, is just figuring out who's on what specifically to figure out who to target them to. Like I was saying about the time aspect, figuring out what time they're on. You'll be able to, to determine that by the likes as those are coming through. Um, another thing too, um, kind of sidebarring off that, you can pay to have promotion done for your posts. I just did um, a six day promotion, I think for $30 for the launch of Foreign and Domestic Affairs um, on Instagram. It's great, I'm getting a ton of likes, woohoo. But what I really care about is the website traffic because what that promoted post is doing is saying, hey, great, check this out, come join us, visit the website. So that's what I'm trying to get people to do out of that is that call to action to get them to visit the website. If you're just posting something casual like, hey, I'm gonna sit down and write for 20 minutes and there's no, you, there's no call to action with it, I don't really recommend doing a promotion with it because then again, you can sort of become lost within the social media as someone who's overdoing it. So you wanna be really careful about doing promotions and not overdoing that, but they're really affordable. Yes. So we'll use Amazon advertising, if I, if I can just follow up on that. Um, I'll get back to that because that's a good question too. Um, what was that? Uh, what I'm sure trying to get at is you know, the demographics of the different uh, um, social media is, in, 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 you, as you say, think about your audience, but for Facebook, that's an older audience. Mm -hmm. You know, I told my kids I hadn't seen them on Facebook and they said, nobody uses Facebook anymore, huh. although there's a billion people using yes. it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah. for younger people, they're on Instagram. Yes. Uh, the same thing with Twitter and mm -hmm. I don't remember what the other, but there's some, I mean, if, if you really want to target an audience, find out which audience oh, uh, uses really which nice. social media outlets. Yeah, yeah, that's very important. That's Amazon great. advertising. I haven't done that yet. I haven't done that yet. I've heard a lot of mixed reviews. Um, so I need to do more research on that. Um, and I can get back to you. Um, I'm probably going to start <coughs> looking into that's it. Where my, that's my success. Mm -hmm. That's where your success has been? Okay. I've had, I've heard back and forths. Um, but I definitely am starting to look into more professional marketing with um, the release of my sequel. And when, when Jira, and then we'll get back to the call. Okay, on Facebook, do you post through the feed or through your story? It I post usually through my feed mm -hmm. and then post to the my story. Because oh, you can the save same. them at the top of the page okay. here. So you can either post directly to the My Story, which will be here, mm -hmm. and then I think the top My Story ones are here. So when people log into Facebook, they're more likely to see you there at the top. I think that's sort of the, the thought process behind posting to the My Story, because then you're right there. Mm -hmm. And if I click on this one here, that one will play for X amount of seconds and it'll automatically go into this one, which will pay for X amount of seconds and so on. So that's sort of the theme behind the My Stories. Mm -hmm. And that's the same thing for Instagram. It's a very similar format there. Um, I'm very bad about remembering the saving to My Story, frankly. <laughs> that's something I'm just sort of starting to figure out. Uh, we had one question back here and then over here. Um, do you just have the one Facebook account and so you're live streaming and Anything that you're doing to promote your work is on that one Facebook account? Yes. Okay. That's not recommended. So that's something, too, that you have to figure out for yourself if that's...